hosting of World Design Capital 2014 fits in perfectly with the vision of the city of Cape Town. It will be 20 years of our new found democracy that we are going to celebrate. We will use design to first of all build a more inclusive city, bridge the divides of the past. It will help us to use design to build a more caring city. It will also help us to build and transform the way people live today. World Design 2014 obviously puts Cape Town centre stage. Um, first developing nation city to be awarded the design capital status. We will promote greater partnerships between business, government, communities, NGOs, academia and the design community. The city is strongly positioning itself as an alternative to just being a leisure tourism destination. We want to demonstrate that this is also a serious destination when it comes to major investments. From multi-billion rand investment projects such as the integrated rapid transport system, investment in water and sanitation projects, through the violence prevention through urban upgrading which is geared towards providing a livable urban environment in our low cost communities. We became the first city ever in South Africa and in the rest of the continent to have been honoured to be awarded this prestigious award of World Design Capital 2014. What's unique about this World Design Capital over the previous World Design Capitals is that the city administration has actually created an internal department which will look after its initiatives. Uh, where they essentially want to bring design into the city, design thinking and design methodologies. World Design Capital provides my portfolio with a unique opportunity to showcase the phenomenal iconic design of Cape Town Stadium with a unique physical space within which to host major sporting events as well as big concerts. Cape Town has also received many accolades, including the best beaches, the best city to visit, and recently Table Mountain, the seventh natural wonder of the world. My mountain, my vote, and the sun is out. The kind of challenges that we face, like poverty, unemployment, homelessness, is the kind of problems faced by the rest of Africa. This is a unique opportunity for Cape Townians to come forward with simple design solutions to help make the city more manageable, to help make our public spaces more acceptable, and certainly to make the city more livable. The real legacy is to create some sort of platform, a collaborative platform that will foster design and design thinking into the future. The hope is off the back of this event and off the back of this accolade to see a significant and substantial growth in foreign direct investment and certainly investment into manufacturing and particularly unique investment into design as a sector for Cape Town and certainly South Africa. We are enjoying this award on behalf of the whole of the continent and we are also going to ask the continent of Africa to join us in celebrating this award. be a shot in the arm and the reason why I use that video is to locate World Design Capital Cape Town uh, with its funding masters. The city of Cape Town was the seed funder, not insignificantly so, but at the same time what you're going to be seeing in the public side of World Design Capital, there's that internal process going on inside the city and that was Richard Perez who's an engineer leading that. So um, I'm delighted to be here with you, uh, nice to be amongst friends. I, I, at some point I start thinking that we're all related to everybody when you work on World Design Capital because there are people dotted through the room, hello Louis, um, that, that have, seem to have known forever and then new people that I see all the time. So ultimately, what is World Design Capital Cape Town and what's the opportunity? It's a competition we won. Uh, we put in a magnificent bid, a beautiful bid book that persuaded the international judges that there was capability here and a certain energy to make that platform visible to the outside world. We've then gone through a process of two calls for submissions from the public. We netted 1,253 projects um, and out of those we've now selected 450 and 72 of those sit in the brochure that's in your goodie bag. We've also given you a terribly nicely graphically designed clock that's starting to count down. 
Um, the challenge all along has been to persuade people who are not directly in the design disciplines like graphic designers or architects that this is about them. Um, we're Just to be very clear about that, to build a design economy or to support a design economy in a place like Cape Town, it needs all of that. It needs software, uh, software engineering, it needs mathematics, it needs all kinds of things. And so for us, the last couple of months, besides setting up a company and having you know, our SAR certificate decline three times for reasons that we found out two months later, I mean, all kinds of administrative stuff, we've now built our pop-up. We're staffed um, probably at our maximum, and we start case managing, if you like, the 450 projects that we've selected. It was tough. We had, um, and Mokena was one of them, one of the curators. We had 38 curators poring over these um, submissions that came in. Uh, good arguments, you know, if you ask 38 designers or 38 curators for their opinions, there will be a multiple of 38 opinions. So getting to that point where we could select and say, what are those things that really do amplify the message of live design, transform life. How do we make tangible, and that's the tough thing, you guys build buildings, but how do we make tangible design that transforms life or design in service of the citizen in a way that we can give it a, a, a footprint in 2014 and put it somewhere on a calendar? So a lot of the projects uh, were existent in some way before, um, before they became part of our uh, umbrella, uh, umbrella project, but many of them we've said, that's beautiful, we love that fly farm you're running in Stellenbosch on, <coughs> on hard waste, what are you going to do for 2014, how are you going to amp it up? So what we're seeing is that there were a number of projects that would have happened maybe in 2015 or 2016, and people have become turbocharged by the, click, by the uh, ticking clock, and we're really pleased about that. We, the four themes that uh, have managed your, or have created the structure for your um, workshops are the four themes that we put out initially. And so to Daniel's point, they were less opportunistic than they were vakar. Daniel and Gordon engaged early. I mean, I didn't even, I don't think I had a chair to sit on when we met the first time, saying we've got to do this thing together. And out of that has come the collaboration um, where I met Amira for the first time with the UIA. And the other night I was in Gauteng, talking to uh, some of the honorees there, and the penny still hasn't dropped that while our backdrop for World Design Capital is Cape Town, the theme, themes we are addressing are universal, the stories we're telling are universal, and so there's an opportunity even for Wittgat Wortel Dry, if they will seize it. Already we're seeing extraordinary media um, attention. The latest wallpaper magazine has five pages, and it's not about pretty things, it's sometimes about very gritty things. It is about hard waste, it is about poo flying on the end too, it is about sanitation, and it is about um, low cost housing or incremental housing, whatever um, term you, you prefer to use. So there is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity, and while we'll continue to include these in, um, in our program and develop that on our website that launches um, on the 31st of December, there is still a huge opportunity for people, for the um, design industries to engage. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good conference.